Timer is one. Check out my new duds. See, ever since I started making the HerbQuest videos last year, I've always wanted to have a pair of these, but never got one. So today I woke up and I'm like, what am I waiting around for? No, in all seriousness though, I wanted to get a pair of these in like a camouflage pattern, but I, I didn't see any at the store. <laughs> now you know what my, uh, my students have to put up with. So anyway, I'm talking a little bit louder than usual because I have to so you can hear me over everything that's going on around me. This right now is like Frog Central. Today is April 6th and some of the earliest waking up frogs in Michigan have woken up. It was actually on March 26th that I first heard the spring peepers. If you hear in that background that peeping noise, just like their name implies, peep, 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 those are the spring peepers. In addition to that, I'm also hearing the western chorus frog, though I'm not currently hearing it. I've heard it a few times while being out here. And then I'm hearing like a chirping frog noise, and I'll, go, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what that one is. Maybe uh, if we find it, we'll be able to identify it. I've got my field guides with me. What I'm really after today is the spring peeper, because I've never caught one before. And in fact, I've only seen it a few times. This is really my third day being out here. The other two times, I saw some spring peepers. This here is the best footage I got. And as you can see by best footage, I mean still not that great at all. Spring peepers, they're loud, they're all around me right now. And these things are so great at hiding. They're like hide and go seek champions, almost as good as Bigfoot. But of course, if I happen to get any other type of frog, then we'll certainly identify that one too. All right, I'm on a herb quest. Let's go find a spring peeper. Seriously, they are like all over this place. You know, I'm here for a spring peeper, but I gotta find out what's making that other noise too. I feel a temperature difference. It's definitely cold water, but my feet are not wet. Those chirping frogs, they're willing to stay right there at the top of the water. And just hang out. What are you, dude, and why are you letting me get so close? The spring peepers never let me get this close. Who are you? What are you? These guys are so cool. I only got two right here. So awesome. Oh, I love spring. I don't know what that frog is. And I'm here for peepers. But this is a pleasant surprise. So I'm trying to use a app I got on my phone that's got different North American frog calls on there. It sounds like the wood frog. I mean, that's, that's just, that's what it's closest sounding to. It sounds a lot like it, but I'm gonna have to consult my field guide. By the way, I don't endorse one field guide over the other. Um, I would say, depends on how they're organized, what you prefer. But when it comes to field guides, I like to have like every single one I can get my hands on, cross-reference. Breeding is March to June in northern areas. So, according to this field guide, yeah, we should be able to find them in March. Dark blotch on chest near base of each front leg. That might be how I identify if this is a wood frog or not. Oh, voice, a series of short raspy quacks. I think you could call what we're hearing, not the peeping, but the other one, short raspy quacks. Though I gotta admit, I never thought I'd say those three words in that order in any sentence, but there we go, short raspy quacks. Check this out. In the colder parts of its range, the wood frog is an explosive breeder. Swarms and pairs lay fertilized eggs within one or two days, then disappear into the surrounding country. So this might be that I just stumbled upon a very rare opportunity here where you've only got like one or two days if you find them doing this. I need to go find what I am now pretty convinced is a wood frog. All right, see what we can do. Okay, now. Realistically, I'm not gonna carry this camera into there while I'm trying to catch one, so 
hopefully I've got it pointed where I'm going to catch one. We'll see. Is. There you go. I don't know if he's going to be hopping or not. Wow. I'm pretty convinced wood frog right here. Kind of curious if I could go get another. Maybe compare the two and see what they look like. Because when I was out there, they definitely had slightly different colors to them. Let's go get another one. Alright, now I wanted I wanted one more. I got two. Alright. Oh, sweet. One of them has that modeling that the book was talking about. Actually, two of them do. Just more than the other. Let's see what Audubon has to say about you. Again, I already looked at this, but now that we got them in front of us, pink, tan, or dark brown, with prominent dark mask ending abruptly behind eardrum. I gotta admit, I am seeing that dark mask that they're talking about. Light stripe on upper jaw. Sometimes light line down middle of back. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's kind of there. It's slightly there. Dorsal lateral ridges prominent, and we do have those right here. Yep, that ridge is prominent. Dark blotch on chest near base of each front leg. Breeding is early spring before ice has completely melted from water. Egg masses are attached to submerged vegetation. Habitat is moist woodlands in eastern areas, open grassland in western, tundra in the far north. That, by the way, this guy's got a range pretty far here. All the way up into northern Canada and Alaska. In fact, it also says North American frog, only North American frog found north of the Arctic Circle. Pretty cool. Swarms of pairs lay fertilized eggs within one or two days, then disappear into the surrounding country. Man, this was a great find. I'm going to do some quick handling here. There's those two dark blotches. Move your hand, dude. <laughs> There's those two dark blotches at the base of the front pairs of legs. We just found a wood frog. And you see also prominent white stripe on the upper jaw. Definitely a brown color. What a cute little guy. All right, these guys have been awesome, but it's time to let them get back to doing their very short period of time breeding. They've got a mission. Let's make sure they stay on task. All right, thank you for checking out this episode on the unexpected surprise of the wood frog. I can tell you, I never have caught a wood frog and known that it was a wood frog. I mean, when I was a kid, I was catching frogs all the time, so maybe I did catch one, but back then it was just frog. Now, having seen and identified uh, a specimen I did not know, this is pretty exciting for me. You see, when it comes to HerpQuest, I wanted to make these videos partially for my Science Olympiad team when Herpetology is one of their events. They got these videos they can check out. And that's true for any Science Olympiad team members that are checking this out. Shout out to you guys. You work hard. But also, I'm doing this because I really love Herpetology. I love these species. And there still, though, are some species that I don't really know much about. So while there's some I know in and out, there's others, like this guy, the wood frog, he was a, kind of a stranger to me. And in getting to do this, I get to learn more as I go. So that's why I love making these science videos. Not only do I get to try to teach you guys something, but I have to learn plenty along the way too. Whether it be something I know very well, or it be a species that, like the wood frog, I just got to really get a close encounter with today. So cute. So thank you very much for checking out this episode. Thought I was coming out here for some spring peepers. Instead, got this very unexpected one to two day window surprise. Awesome. 
Looks like, I hope, the next episode then is about the spring peeper. We'll see. I'm Rich Lund. Hey, don't forget, if you're ever out there herping, let's leave nature as good or better than we found it. We'll catch you next time.